continuing on from our previous episode where we demonstrated how to create collections with the storage API in Oracle's mobile cloud service. In this episode, we want to quickly demonstrate to you how to test the storage API collections remotely using curl scripts. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle mobile platform team. Now, in the previous episode, we discussed building a spelling mobile app for kids called Spell Wars, a heady mix of spelling and Star Wars mixed together to entice our kids to play the game and hopefully learn how to spell. Now, also in that episode, we talked about creating a shared collection via the storage API for our students to post their scores to, to encourage them to compete with each other and hopefully get them spelling more. We also created an isolated collection called user preferences to store things like personal avatar pictures and other settings that shouldn't be shared amongst other users. So we're going to continue with this mock app for the following examples. And if you need more context, please refer back to that previous episode. To continue where we left off, let's investigate populating and querying the scoreboard collection. But rather than doing that inside the MCS user interface, Let's externally step outside MCS and make a call to it via curl scripts, simulating real external HTTP requests hitting the MCS Spell Wars mobile backend. Now, curl nicely allows us to simulate a real external mobile client app hitting our platform APIs without having to build a full mobile app to do so. Let's start out by executing a curl call to fetch all the objects from the scoreboard collection as little Joe. In this call, you can see a get to our MCS server forward slash mobile slash platform slash storage slash collections slash scoreboard slash objects. On receiving a response from our server, we receive a JSON document and as we can see, with zero items listed, which is understandable as we haven't actually populated the collection yet. So let's imagine little Joe is happily playing Spell Worlds, our fantastic mobile app for kids to learn how to spell, and little Joe completes a spelling game with a great score of nine, only incorrectly spelling Jabba the Hutt. On completing this game, our app will automatically upload the following JSON file to our server containing little Joe's score. So from curl, we will initiate the following call to simulate this scoreboard entry being added by calling a post on our MCS server, mobile platform storage collection scoreboard objects URL. And as a result, in the response, we can see that as we specifically didn't call the put command here, supplying our own object ID, MCS has allocated an object ID for us. Now, imagine a separate little user called Little Annie, not Little Joe, but Little Annie is also playing Spell Wars and she completes the game with a score of six. On completing the game, we want to upload the following JSON document to catch little Annie's score. To upload this document, we issue pretty much the same call, a post to mobile platform storage collection scoreboard objects, but this time we do it as the little Annie user rather than the little Joe user. And as a result, again, we can see the object ID returned by MCS for the newly created object. Finally, Lil Joe is really excited about his score and he wants to see all the most recently lodged scores on the scoreboard to see how he is doing. So from the app, we can issue a get call to the objects of the collection, but in this case, we add an order by parameter to the URL to return all the objects in the scoreboard in descending order based on the modified on metadata date for the objects in the collection. And in the response, you can first see the object metadata for little Annie, as well as a canonical link to separately download the actual payload for that scorecard, followed by the object metadata for little Joe, and again, the canonical link to download little Joe's scorecard. Finally, up to now, everything I've been showing you has resulted in successful calls along with the corresponding results. But we know in the real world, things don't always go that well. So let's now have a look at how the storage API behaves we tend to deliberately make some curl calls that we know won't work. In order to do that, you might remember earlier on in the isolated collection for user preferences that we created in the previous episode, we uploaded an avatar picture for little Joe. So if we issue a get call to the mobile platform storage collections, user preferences, objects, avatar.png URL, requesting an image PNG content type as little Joe, 
From this request, we then get the image returned to some string encoded is, ah, well, as you can see, it's a bit messy on the screen here. Now, as a command line tool, curl doesn't display images, though if we move to the top, we can see some of the image metadata embedded in the file, proving it's the PNG image that we retrieved. Now, at this point in time for little Annie, we haven't uploaded any avatar picture at all. So if we issue exactly the same call, but instead supplying little Annie's credentials, rather than getting a picture, we get a 404, indicating no object return. This occurs because the user preferences collection is isolated and a request for an object ID of avatar returns nothing yet as Annie hasn't uploaded an avatar picture into her isolated collection yet. So this is regardless of what little Joe's uploaded into his isolated collection. Remember, it's an isolated collection. Each user gets their own instance. Alternatively, let's explore a scenario with a shared scoreboard collection. Now, in this scenario, Little Joe is going to upload a new scorecard called winnerscorecard.json to the scoreboard. Now, rather than issuing a post to the mobile platform storage collection scoreboard objects URL, where previously MCS allocated an object ID for us, what we're going to instead do here is issue a put call and as part of the URL, supply the object ID winnerscorecard.json. Now what we'll discover is this call will succeed and you'll get a status code of 201 created. Right, but now let's issue exactly the same call again using a put and supplying exactly the same object ID of winnerscorecard.json. But rather than doing this for little Joe, let's do this for little Annie in the same shared collection and watch what happens. Hmm. Now we might have expected this call to fail because of the collision in the object ID names. But in this case, the put call has overridden little Joe's record with little Annie's record, and you can see a success status code of 200. This harks back to the point we made in the previous episode that shared collections are shared and it is possible for one user to override another user's objects. Now it's up to you as the mobile application developer to build in the protection in your mobile app to stop this or use an isolated collection where necessary. As you can see, creating collections in the MCS Storage API and manipulating them is relatively easy thanks to the REST APIs that it uses. In the next episode, we'll dig into the REST API in detail to discuss the full set of options available to you. Thanks for joining us in this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to catch you in the next episode very soon.